Welcome to Postscript. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the messages and sermons at FaithBridge by talking with the teacher of the day. Hello, my name is Adam McIntyre, and welcome to Postscript. I am here with Pastor Ken Warline, who just delivered another message on our first Peter series. Ken, thank you so much sure. for being here with us today. We had a few questions uh, roll in, okay. and the first question uh, acknowledged the need for Christians to love one another and to love one another well, but then they asked, how do we love someone who is particularly difficult to love? We all have those people in our lives sure. who just really yeah. rub us the wrong way or get our nerves or sometimes that even offend us in some kind of yeah. way. How do we love those people well? Sure. Well, of course, we ought to re realize also we might be that person to somebody else. Yeah. <laughs> so how would we want to be loved? A couple of thoughts come to mind. First of all, I have always found it helpful to start praying for that person. Mm -hmm. And not once, not twice, but I remember years ago in seminary, uh, one of my mentors said, when you've got an unlovable person in your life, you're going to have to pray for them faithfully for 30 days at least. Don't miss a one. And something interesting does happen when you begin to pray for somebody. And I'm not talking about, and Lord, won't you call down plagues <laughs> upon them? Not that kind of prayer. Um, but genuinely asking God to pour out blessings upon them to, you know, um, something happens and that is your heart will grow softer mm -hmm. to them. And so I would say start there. Begin to just really become intentional about praying for the person. Then the second thing is, I think in instances like that, there is a place for boundary setting. Absolutely. And... Uh, sort of defining to yourself and maybe even to the individual if 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 it's possible sort of here's inbounds and here's out of bounds right um and you're not saying my love is contingent upon your staying in bounds and not going out of bounds not necessarily mm -hmm. um but there is for your own sanity and health i believe a good thing uh to be experienced when we ourselves know sort of here's what's inbounds and outbounds and, and here's what I'm going to do to keep myself healthy from getting sucked into whatever dysfunction or the unlovable quality it is that right. uh, characterizes their life, which can become contagious. Absolutely. Let's not forget. Um, and that leads to the third thing. Bring that uh, situation into the confidence of your of your team, yeah. of your spiritual family, of your small group, uh, and have them be praying for you and for that person. That there might be uh, a breakthrough, a healing, um, you, you know, something that would that there might be some progress. Absolutely, yeah. Well, and a lot of times they can help you even come up with creative ways. <laughs> that you can resolve conflict or set those boundaries sure. um, or things like that. Yeah. And so- Or it, speaking from their own experiences. Absolutely, yeah. Um, if it's a person of wisdom and biblical, biblical, biblically founded. Absolutely, community is so helpful yeah. in those instances. Mm -hmm. uh, in your sermon, you talked about the necessity for us to become spiritually mature, to not stay infants, yeah. Christian infants. Babies, yeah. Right, and in doing so, you, alluded to people who seem to not be able to stay in one place. They just, they just keep moving around. They keep, they keep moving churches. ADHD. AD, yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> were you talking about church shopping there? What were you referring to there? Sure. Oh, well, I'm not talking about ADHD literally. Right. Um, well, yeah, maybe not church shopping, but church hopping. Okay. So let's differentiate. When a person or a family or a couple moves into a community, you, you're going to need to do a little church shopping. Sure. And so you ask around with the people that you work with and your neighbors and you find out, well, this is a good church you might want to try. And this is, they really preach the Bible and you know, so on. So you're going to make your little list and you're going to 
visit some places, maybe try out a, a, a grow group or, you know, even some of the things that they sort of specialize in if every church kind of has a niche. But there is inherent with the concept of church shopping a destination in mind. Right. There, the, the, we're not just going to shop forever. We're, um, we're, we're trusting God is big enough and good enough to put us someplace and it won't be perfect because there's no perfect place, exactly. uh, church, and because there's no perfect people. But we're going to find the one that, that seems to be speaking to our souls and helping if, if we have family, with the family the best, and, and we're going to anchor ourselves there. I think the, the, the thing that I was more referring to or alluding to is something that you see in American Christianity, as I understand it, more than you see in international Christianity. And this is the untethered Christian who just hops. Right. And it's almost as if they're saying, oh, I know everything the Bible says about community and what we were talking about today, the family and blood relative, but I'm above that. Mm -hmm. So I'll go where I want to go. I'll stay when I want. I'll leave when I want to stay. And, and th th so it's like they're hoppers. Right. And I don't see any biblical foundation for that mm -hmm. because the church was nothing in biblical times if not this anchored uh, place where the Christians were tethering themselves to each other. And as Peter was teaching them once again, this is how you get through this world of persecution. Um, not by acting somehow that you're above all of that right. and that you, I don't need that. And I'll just treat it like anything else in my life. I'm in charge of it and I'll keep it as long as I like it. And then I'll just chunk it when I'm done with Absolutely. it. I don't think that's healthy. I don't think it's Obviously. biblical. I know it's not biblical. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Well, it's hard to get plugged into any kind of family or community. If, right. if you have that almost self-righteous air about you, sure. or as soon as you see something that you don't agree with, and it's like, well, I'm out, you know, find yep. the next right. church. And then you just keep doing that. And uh, nothing's ever going to be, like you said, I don't perfect. Think it's a, I don't think it's a good pattern. No. Uh, I don't think it's a healthy thing. No, absolutely yeah. not. And then it, in that same uh, moment of your sermon, we were talking about spiritual maturity. Mm -hmm. um, you referenced the need for us to fill ourselves up with um, spiritually the milk of nourishing. God's word. Yeah, right, absolutely. the nourishment of God's word, sure. And so what does that look like for you practically? How do you mm. feed yourself yeah. spiritually? Well, years ago, I was introduced to an acrostic that is still my preferred way of doing devotions. It's not the only way of doing devotions. It's a tool that I'd love to put in everybody's toolbox, though. Sure. And it's called the SOAP, S-O-A-P method. And a mentor of mine, Wayne Cordero, uh, taught it to me about a decade ago. And uh, not that I hadn't had plenty of other devotional tools in my toolbox and still do, but it, when I learned that one, I really, that really became a preferred tool. Rather than go through the whole thing, I would refer people to um, you can really probably just Google soap, sure. devotion. Um, I've written an article on it. Uh, Wayne has written a, a lot of things on it. And if you go to the version right. app, get that app on your iPhone, um, there's, there's that uh, sort of method for right. doing devotions and getting into God's word and about a thousand others. There's, there's so many different ways. So take an afternoon and, and just read through some of these uh, devotional plans. But the main thing is get on some plan right. that will put a diet, put you on the diet of God's word right. where you're getting to it every day. Yeah. And feeding on that and putting that into your mind. And if you're not a reader and if you're a driver and you commute, and a lot of people commute in Houston, sure. listen to it. You can get, hear it in every version now online sure. and, and d drive along and, on your commute and listen to God's word and get that into your mind instead of just all of the m mental chewing gum stuff that we listen to on the radio and watch right. on TV and everything like that. Yeah, let Morgan Freeman read you the Bible. Yeah, that There you go. Good. That's right. That's, that's, that's <laughs> absolutely. Right. Well, Pastor Ken, thank you so much for being here with us today. And thank you all for tuning in. We will see you all next week.
Thanks for joining us for PostScript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org slash postscript.